Let's do an exercise to show you how important it is to understand what the world looks like. So this is all about understanding some basic global statistics. It has nothing to do with doing math, but it has to do with learning some orders of magnitude because they allow us to become smarter thinkers. They are the right input in order for us to reason about this world, which is often not intuitive. For example, let's have a very concrete example. Imagine you are at your new job and your boss comes in and says, I have a genius idea. Let's develop a digital technology that allows everybody in the world to always get access to the digital realm. He says, okay, so, so let's go, guys, help me, let's, let's, let's work this out. First question, uh, how should we price it? What should be the cost of this digital access tool? Now, your colleague who is actually competing with you for this job, imagine you're both in probationary time and at the end only one of you gets a permanent contract and he is like a know-it-all and he's very quick. He says, boss, it's a genius idea. I suggest we price it at um, $100 per solution. Your boss says, okay. What do you say? Is $100 a good price to provide digital access for everybody in the world or not? Well, we can go very systematically about it. We have to answer two questions. First of all, we have to have a general feeling about how much people earn in this world. And second of all, we have to know the percentage that on average people spend on ICT, I mean, they also have to eat and have to pay rent. And then we can know like, okay, is that is $100? Is, is that too much or too little to provide access for everybody? So let's go about these two questions. Let's start with the question, how much do people earn in the world? In the United States, the gross national income per person is at about almost 5000 dollars a month in 2015 four thousand five hundred dollars per month per person now that's an average between very high paying jobs for example data analysts big data analysts who earn some ten thousand dollars per month and minimum wage which in 2015 was at ten dollars an hour and people work eight hours a day, 22 days a month, so it's $1,700, $1,800 per month that you get if you work on minimum wage. So it's these, let's say the $5,000 is an average between less than $2,000 and $10,000. Now, the global average income worldwide is at less than $1,000 per month. And the most interesting fact about that is how it's distributed. For example, how many people in the world, what percentage of the world population do you think live at less than $2 a day? So $2 a day, that's $60 a month. What percentage of the world do you think lives at less than $60 per month? It's about 40%. So 40% live in less than $2 a day. The World Bank says these people live in poverty. So 40% of the world lives in poverty. Interestingly, 20% of the world live with less than a dollar and 25 per day. The World Bank says these people live in extreme poverty. And about half of the world population lives with less than $2.50 per day. $2.50 times 30 days, that's $75 a month. Less than half of the world population, every second person lives with less than $75 a month. Okay, so now to our second question. How much of this monthly income do people spend on ICT? How much do you spend per month? on ICT. So how much is your monthly phone bill, mobile phone and or fixed line phone bill? And how much is your internet connection? Probably a broadband connection. 
Some average values are that people you might spend some $80 per month on your mobile phone bill. It might be more, it might be less. And maybe some $40 on a broadband connection. Maybe also more or less. Maybe you have cable TV with your broadband and whatever and you have a triple package or, or whatever. Um, but these are some average values. Oh yeah, and then you also need your computer. It's also part of your ICT expenditure. Now you buy your computer only every maybe every two years. Let's say you buy a laptop for $1,000 every two years, maybe a little bit less, let's say every 20 months to make the math easy. So $1,000 every 20 months. So that's about equivalent to spending about $50 per month if you pay it off over this 20 month, right? So you have $80 plus $40 plus $50 $170, $170 per month. That's what you spend on ICT. So what percentage is that of your income? Let's say you work at minimum wage as, as a student. Minimum wage, we said it's $1,700, $1,800. So it's about 10%. And that's also in agreement with global statistics. So worldwide, people spend between 5 and 10% on their income on ICT. So now, is a hundred dollar a good price for an ICT access solution for everybody worldwide? There were several initiatives, very laudable initiatives. For example, one very famous one was called One Laptop Per Child, where an initiative being born at MIT was proposing to provide one laptop per child worldwide. And they initially priced it at a hundred dollars a piece. So that's really a, a real world question. Afterwards, other solution came, for example, a tablet in India is produced and is sold for only 63 dollars per piece per tablet. But still, if we say that 20% of the world lives at a dollar 25 per month, so dollar 25, that's $30 per month, maybe, maybe 40, let's say 30, $40 to make the math easy. And 10% of that is being spent on ICT. And these people, they spend around three to $4 a month on ICT. That's what they have available. So if you want to buy an access solution for $63 or $100, and you have three to $4 a month, you need about two years. 25 months, so write $100 and you get, let's positively think you get $4, you have $4 a month. So 100 divided by 4 are 25 months. So 25 months, that's two years. You need to save two years in order to make this initial investment. And during these two years, you cannot spend anything. You cannot make one phone call before because all your ICT budget is being saved up to make this investment. And then you have this piece of hardware, this tablet or this $100 laptop, and you still don't have any traffic. You still don't have any internet connection because you spend all your money in this piece of hardware. So it's very important to understand these dimensions, these order of magnitudes, if you want to do smart choices and want to reason well. So coming back to the example, the imaginary example of the conversation with your boss, at the back of the envelope, if you now have these basic numbers in mind, you can make a calculation and say, hmm, I'm not sure, a hundred dollars? That might be a little bit too expensive. Maybe we should either lower the price and if that's not possible, maybe we should not make such outrageous claim like we provide the solution to connect everybody worldwide. Because 20% of humankind, they have about three or four dollars per month to spend on ICT. That's all they have.